In this video, we're going to talk about magnetic fields and forces, and mostly the equations associated with those. So we know that magnetic field, magnet, magnets excuse me, form fields around them, much like a gravitational field or an electric field. Um, and the space is altered by this field. So magnetic field lines are going to point out of north and curve around and point back into south. Um, the closer together the magnetic field lines are, the stronger the magnetic field is. The symbol for magnetic field is a capital B, and it is a vector, so it should have your vector arrow over the top of it. The unit for magnetic field is a capital T, which stands for Tesla. We can draw magnetic field lines for many different types of magnets. So um, if we had a horseshoe magnet, a horseshoe magnet is basically a bar magnet that's uh, bent in half. So we have arrows coming out of north and going into south. If you put two magnets together uh, like this, they would go out of north into south. Um, if you put two norths together, they would be, hold on. Okay, so if you have two north magnets together, then they'll kind of curve out like that. Two south sides of the magnet together, they would curve in like so. You can uh, explore these with magnetic or um, iron filings. Um, magnetic field lines actually make complete loops. We don't often draw the magnetic field within the magnet, but it's making a complete circle. Something that's really cool about magnets is you can't break them in half. So if you were to um, take a magnet and break it in half, you wouldn't ever get a north and a south. You would always get a north on one side of it and a south on the other side of it. Um, because the magnetic fields are occurring on like a microscopic, not even microscopic, atomic level. It has to do with the uh, spin of the electrons within the um, atoms. And so you're never, you're never going to be able to have a north and a south. There's no such, no such thing as a monopole. You won't have a north without a south or a south without a north. You'll always have both, no matter how many times you break a magnet. Now the right hand rule is useful for determining the direction of magnetic field and current and we use it for several, there's several different versions of it. So um, if you have a wire carrying, um, carrying current, there's a magnetic field that's looping circles around that wire. So if you take your thumb and you put it in the direction of current, your fingers, your right thumb, I should say, your fingers are going to curl in the direction of the magnetic field. So if you hold up your right hand right now, put your right thumb with these red arrows, your fingers should be curling over the top um, and then up the back side. So that shows you the, the direction of the magnetic field around that wire. You could do the same for a loop of wire. Uh, but you could just do it backwards. So you could curl your fingers in the direction of the current, and then your thumb will point in the direction of the magnetic field in the middle of the loop. Of course, it would go in the opposite direction on the outside because those are making full loops. You could also um, just take your thumb and put it in the direction of the current, and you can see which way the magnetic field is looping here. So like if you put your thumb into the screen right now, you should have your fingers following this current or this magnetic field loop. We also have solenoids. Solenoids are coils of wire where the current is going around and around and around. Um, if you take your fingers and you move them in the direction of the current, so I would make my fingers go up this way and then curl down into the screen, and my thumb is going to point in the direction of the magnetic field within the solenoid. We also have a magnetic or um, a right hand rule that tells us the for the direction of the force on a moving charge within a magnetic field. You should have seen some demos and understand that the magnetic field is going to apply a force on moving charges. And this right hand rule tells you how to find the direction of that force. So you put your thumb in the direction of the moving charge. You put the, your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field and your palm pushes in the direction of the force. Notice the force is always perpendicular to the plane of the magnetic field and the velocity. 
So we can write an equation, um, F equals QVB sine theta. Sine theta, theta is going to be the angle between V and B. So um, V and B don't have to be at 90 degrees. Notice that if V and B are in the same direction, so if, they're, if, sine, if theta is zero, we know that sine of zero is zero. So you won't have any force. So the velocity can't be moving. There won't be a force of velocities in the same direction as it does the magnetic field. It has to have at least partial, at least one component perpendicular to the magnetic field. Um, also notice that the force is always going to be perpendicular to the velocity. So a charge will move in a circle at a constant speed when it's in a uniform magnetic field. Um, and uh, another thing is that this is all for positive charges. So um, if you had a negative charge, you could use the right-hand rule and just know that the force is going to be in the opposite direction. Or you can use the right-hand rule, or you could just use the right-hand rule with your left hand. You could use your left hand and do the left-hand rule for a negative charge. Right-hand rule works for positive charge. This is just a picture showing that the force is always going to be perpendicular to the velocity of the particle. So if I have a magnetic field um, and the little X's uh, stand for magnetic fields going into the page, if it was dots, it would be magnetic field out of the page. Um, and so I can see, I can use my right hand rule here. If I have my velocity here, you can put your velocity in the direction of this um, arrow. Your magnetic field lines, so your fingers, point in the direction of the um, of the into the mag into the magnetic field, so into the screen. And you should see that your palm, if you're using your right hand, your palm is facing out. Well, this is a negative charge, so the force would be opposite. Then you could also use your net your left hand rule, your left hand to do it. So you put your left thumb in the direction of velocity. Your fingers would point into the screen and you should have your palm pointing towards the center of the circle. And no matter, as the velocity direction changes, the force is always perpendicular to velocity. So we know that it's going to be changing direction and moving in a circle. Now we can also expand this equation. So let's say that theta is 90 degrees. We have force equals QVB. And let's think about a current moving through a wire. So we know that the velocity of the, the charges in the wire is equal to the length of the wire divided by the time it takes the charge to get through the wire. So if we instead put L over T um, in for velocity, then we get Q times L over T times B. Then we can regroup the T over with the Q and we know that charge per time is current. So we can rewrite this equation if we have the force on a, for the force on a current carrying wire, we get force equals the current times the length of the wire times the magnetic field. And um, that is another equation that you will be using.